Okay, everyone, let's take a look at number 11. So here we are asked to find g of f of x, and I'm just going to advance this notation a bit. So always start from the inside and work yourself out. So I've got to find f of x, which they actually gave me an analytical function, so I'm going to put in 5x minus 4. This is going to become g of 5x minus, oops, minus 4. And then I'm going to go ahead, now I'm going to take what's inside my parentheses, my grouping symbols, and I'm going to substitute that in to the x expression or the x part of the g of x function. So let's try this. This says I should do 5x minus 4 squared and then add 3 to it. So now it's a foiling issue. So I need to do 5x minus 4 times 5x minus 4, or technically that's double distribution, but here we go. So we've got 25x squared, outer is 20x, inner is 20x, last is 16, plus a little 3. So I'm looking at basically 25x squared minus 40x plus 19, and let's see if that matches up. That does with B. And my only little note would be, let's say I had changed the problem just slightly and I had said something like G of F of 1. I would actually argue this is even easier in my opinion. I, I personally like plugging in the numbers better than the functions because what I would have done here is I would have found f of one, right? And that would mean, and let me even change the coloring here, f of one, I would substitute that into this, this x value for your f function. So this would be g of five times one minus four. Um, five times one is five, five minus four is one. This becomes just g of one, right? And then I would have plugged now my new x value here into the x expression in my g of x function. So this would be 1 squared plus 3, which is 4. So I actually think it's simpler when there's just the number that I can plug in rather than a letter like x, but I just wanted you to see both. All right, thanks so much. Bye.